it's a Thank pleasure you. to get a film. Sometimes it's not as indie as some of the others are. That's get polished and slick, and that we can try and push to a mainstream audience besides the diehard horror fans. So I was very happy to get something that I knew that we could feature this way. Well, thank um, you. It's still very indie. Don't don't get me wrong. We we're all in debt over that one. Uh, well, sure. But in terms of production value, it's a very slick, slickly produced film. Very professional. Um, thank you. Can you? Matthew has uh, had a career as an actor, and he's segueing into directing now. He's done some shorts before this. Uh, can you give us an overview of that and what led you to make the decision to, to move into directing? Uh, the writer's strike of 2008 made me <laughs> set up in my career pretty much decimated. I feel like, should we yeah, go over here? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys! Uh, so first of all, I want to uh, say thank you all for coming. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks Greg so much for, for having the, um, the, the wisdom to show you the, the film. It's um, you know it's such an honor that uh, sort of you know my directorial debut is uh, getting the love that it's getting. Um, and your question, I'm sorry, was uh, the segue to yeah, the, the change so in career. I um, I decided I enjoyed digesting food, so I didn't want to be in front of the camera anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, different crowds. It goes over different in LA. People really like the joke. No. no um, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, uh, I wanted, um, I was always writing, I was always uh, writing screenplays, short stories, uh, and, uh, and you know, novellas, and so that was a part of my journey as an actor, and um, like I said, the, the writer's strike happened in 2000, fall, oh, 2008, 9? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for everyone in the industry, it basically just decimated everybody's career, and we had to start over again. And um, I, uh, I wasn't well known enough to actually kind of pick up where I left off. So uh, instead of you know going through the trials and tribulations of doing it, um, I decided to take that time and uh, write. And I ended up writing uh, three screenplays at that time, oddly enough during a writer's strike. And um, people were responding really well to it. So I just sort of was like, okay, let's let's do this. And then luckily uh, I sold a couple of them. And then um, from there. Uh, went on to direct, so, and I, and I think for actors, um, I think they have an amazing job, it's an incredible talent what they do, and when an actor commits so fully and says that I don't want to do anything else but do this, that's the sign of a true professional. I was never like that, I was like, yeah, I like acting, but what I really want to do is direct, so uh, luckily it happened that way. And, um, it's an eight-year overnight sensation, is what it is. For us. <laughs> Why was this the first one that you directed them of the scripts you've written? Uh, because they asked me to. Um, no, they. Um, so they, uh, my producers, John and Brad, uh, had a script, had a start date, had cast, and uh, they, the train was on the tracks, and they felt the script wasn't where it needed to be, and our co-producer who I had worked with previously and had read my material prior, who's actually sitting in the audience, uh, Paul Weber, uh, called me up and said, hey, I'm on this project, it's a really good project, but the script needs a little bit of work, uh, would this be something you're into doing? And I'm like, you wanna hire me to write something? Absolutely, yeah. You wanna feed my family? I, I would enjoy that very much. So they gave me the script and then midway through the writing process, uh, they, because uh, we're shooting it from Canada, they said, uh, you're Canadian, right? I said, I am. Great, want to direct it? So apparently, I just needed a passport. Um, and, uh, no, they, they uh, thankfully liked what I had done and felt that my vision on the page was something that I could uh, put on the screen. So uh, they kindly offered it to me, and uh, I worked my fucking ass off and shot a 25 day movie in 18 days. Now, um, I think the film is just starting to get buzz now. I'm just starting to see some reviews out there. Uh, how many times have you screened it? Uh, this is our, I think our seventh, seventh screening. Uh, we just won uh, Best Thriller Feature at the uh, Hot Springs Horror Film Festival, and um, I won Best Director at Comcast in Toronto, so that's it's kind of all overwhelming. <laughs> but uh, cool, yeah, so people are really catching on, and we have, um, you know, if you like the movie, please, you know, tell everyone. Um, 
write about it, review it. If you don't like the movie, just shut the hell up. I mean, <laughs> I mean really, if you don't have anything nice to say, no, I, we don't have distribution yet. So as soon as we get distribution, you can hate it all you want. <laughs> Once they buy it and they say, here you go, walk away, please, hate it, hate it. But uh, for now, if you, uh, if you do like it, we'd love to hear from you. So of those seven screenings you've done, when, when did the screening tour begin? Uh, the, it just started, actually. We're, we're just in the beginning of it. So we started in September with our first screening. Um, uh, in, we had three screenings in Canada. And then uh, we have one in Red Rock, this one. And then I go back to Canada. And uh, then we have one in Vancouver in the new year and uh, LA in the new year as well. So Now, here in Buffalo, we're used to our city doubling for other cities. Often Buffalo is New York City. It, it can be anything. Uh, in terms of trying to evoke New York State, up, upstate New York, outside Westchester, and shoot it in Canada, uh, did you do any research, or you were locked into this is the area where we're going to shoot? No, we. Um, it was all financial. Uh, to, uh, any? How many filmmakers are here? Raise your hand. Yeah. All right. How how, how easy is it to make a movie, guys? <laughs> exactly. So uh, because we're a Canadian film, and we got you know, tax credits and the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund, uh, we had to shoot it in, uh, in Canada. Um, however, uh, I had done an exorbitant amount of research. Uh, we shot our second unit in Westchester. Like I, I had said, look, I really need, as, if we can't go to Westchester, I need to at least uh, give the appearance that uh, we, we tried. <laughs> so uh, even though we shot it in Canada, and uh, it is a Canadian film, it's very much a, a New York story. Um, about the mm -hmm. scariest road in America, which I found utterly fascinating. Does anyone, anyone here know the stuff about Buckout Road? Yeah, I know you do. How do we do? What? How do we do? You did really good. The, um, I dated a, a girl from White Plains who took me to Buckout Road, and she played the CD Albino. I saw it up there. <laughs> and uh, was that the real Valhalla police station? No. I thought so. No. <laughs> 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 storefront in Sudbury, Ontario, about uh, four hours from Toronto. So. <laughs> oh, thanks, brother. Oh, thank you, because I'm, I'm not, this is scaring the shit out of me right now. Like, we screened this in Calgary, and everyone's like, yeah, it's great, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to New York, I'm like, oh, man, I'm messing with your stuff. <laughs> so... Uh, how much of how much of what went into the script in terms of the mythology is based on actual things that, that you you found in your research? So the real Buck, the, so Buckeye Road is a real uh, street in street. It's a real road uh, in White Plains in Westchester, as is apparent. Um, it is home to thirteen urban legends, like really scary things, um, like some tons we didn't even touch, uh, like um, uh, Albert Fish, the serial killer. Uh, who Hannibal Lecter was based off of, lived on a house in Buckout Road and committed his murders there. Uh, John Barrymore actually bought that house, and that house is the house uh, for uh, the calls coming from inside the house. That, that urban legend, that's, that's the house. So that's only, and that's one house. Um, the, the albinos, the lady in white, um, there's one about the white deer where uh, Native Americans from all over the country come uh, during a full moon to see if they catch a white deer. Yeah, so there's probably people out on Buckout Road right now waiting for the mystical white deer, which is the first uh, yeah, urban legend. Um, obviously the albinos. Um, we, uh, we did an amalgam of a lot, like John Buckout is a real guy, but he wasn't a slave owner, um, and he didn't kill his wife, and his wife, and, and the wife that he killed didn't become the lady in white. However, those are three separate urban legends that we had to put together to tell one story. Otherwise, it would be like a seven-hour film, <laughs> <laughs> or the sequel if you guys really dig it. And I'll, you know, I'm gonna fuck some more shit up on the next one. So. Let's open it up. Who's got some questions? Yes, sir. Well, were you planning on anything in this series? Because the end kind of left us with wanting more. It's like, what do you have a million dollars, sir? Because if you do, I have a story. Yeah, of course. I mean, my producers actually uh, bought the not the rights, but kind of. There's there's five terrifying roads in America, 
and we want to tell the story about three of them. So Buckout Road is one of them, and so we want to carry the mythology over to another haunted road. So yes, we are hoping to make it into the series. Is one of those other roads by any chance Pigman Road? It is not, ah. but thank you now. <laughs> so we have six, six terrifying roads that we want to uh, address. <laughs> Why did you see this movie? You're a child. <laughs> Where are your parents? Who are your parents? Who is your dad? I need to have words with him. Oh. Did you like it? How did how did I'm sorry? How did she go to see How do you think she went to her dream? No, I thought that she went to his dream. Did you? Or was it her dream? See? Yeah, the audience has got to do a little bit of work in this one. I want you to know my daughter will not watch horror films. She oh. won't do what she tells me they're inappropriate. Tonight, maybe because Jillian, our filmmaker from uh, Delaware, is going, oh, thank she you. wanted to see this film. I said, all right, take your chance. <laughs> well, you know, we sort of mislead that it's a horror. I think it's more like a supernatural thrill. It's basically two people in a room talking about God for, you know, an hour and a half. But uh, with, a little, with a woman slitting her throat. Is... <laughs> But I don't tell you that before you see the movie. I, you know, I, surprise, it's a theological debate. Uh, yes. So, um, congratulations on the film, it's amazing. But oh, I was gonna you. say, um, one of the cool things I liked about it was how you kind of had, you know, it's everything's really polished, but then all of a sudden you just have like crazy stuff going on, like the slasher stuff, <laughs> yes. and the old 70s stuff with the bark, bark, bark music, whatever. So like, what made you decide to kind of go back and forth between like high production value, and then so, just kind of going back to like homage to like, yeah, this is horror, and then no, it's not anymore. And back and <laughs> I love you. Um, okay, so <laughs> I am the biggest horror. Like, I'm just a nerd who worked at a video store for a I managed a video store, and I'm a huge fan of midnight movies. Um, like, the, the straight to video ones, you know, when everyone was going to see The Blob and, and in the theater, I was watching, like, Rennie Harlan's Prison or uh, Slaughterhouse Rock. Like, you know, old school, just crazy straight to deep video, the unnameable, all that stuff. Um, and so what I wanted to do was, uh, it served two, two masters. Number one, I wanted to delineate between the dream sequences, like make it very obvious that this is 70s. And I think the best way to do 70s is to do a shitty, you know, 16 millimeter print with a cigarette burn and, you know, skip frames. Um, and the witches, I wanted to do uh, something really desaturated, you know, um, much like the movie The Witch. <laughs> and uh, it's just sort of my, way of saying thank you, like if you'll notice I thank Sam Raimi and Walter Hill, it's because I ripped them off. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I just stole from them. I, you know, I was like, thank you guys for inspiring me for all these years. So, um, uh, yeah, the reason I did it was because I, I hope it's entertaining. I hope it's, uh, it was deliberate and I hope that, you know, you enjoy it as, as you watch it and it, it kind of reminds you of movies that you don't really see anymore. And that's sort of why I did it, just to sort of like, Give a shoulder chuck to the late 80s, early 90s. Yes? Um, do you know anything about the Witch in the Block and the Sally Bean Kate Carson? Uh, maybe that could be an idea for another film you could do. If, if you get the money for it. I love that you guys are pitching me new films. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes. No, I don't know that, but uh, I will do the research for yeah, sure. Also, um, when, when after the QA, I have up on my phone a book that. I think it would be, you could get, that would be interesting. A friend of mine loves this book, it's called Your Choice Supernatural, and uh, there's a lot of stories in there, and you can see where you fit. Great, email it to me. I'll give you my email, like, I'd love it, thank you. I mean, I'm not gonna do it now, but but I'm, I'm in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, guys, seriously, make my job easier. Just give me a bunch of shit to do next. I'm, I'm down, yes. Uh, so what drove you to do those three specific stories? So why not choose the other one? Um, well, the albinos is kind of a no-brainer because it's cannibal albinos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Touché. The Witches is the most famous, uh, fuck, like everyone who thinks about, like who knows about Buckout Road knows about The Witches. And uh, the other one, like I said, was an amalgam of a bunch of stuff. Um, there's a lot of Easter eggs in there for people who are very familiar with Buckout Road. Like, it's... Like the re the spate of fires, everything is burned down. So every time you saw a fire on there, that's not by accident. It's to sort of say, hey, there was a bunch of fires and suicides. There was a, there was like a five year period where like you know fifty people committed suicide off a of Buckout Road for like apparently no reason. So um, 
Yeah, th those three, because they're the most visceral, I would say. I mean, a white deer walking across is pretty. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, deer or demon? I mean, you know, what do you, what do you want to see? So, any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, well, the, both Danny Glover and Evan Ross were actually attached to the project before I came on board. Um, Dominique, who, uh, I don't know, did you guys watch Winona Earp? Is there any Earpers out there? On sci-fi, yeah. So Do Dominique, she actually came in and auditioned for us and um, was the front runner as soon as she walked in the door. She was amazing. Uh, the twins, uh, most of them are Toronto actors, but as far as like Colin Fiore played the priest, uh, and Henry Cherney, those were uh, offers out courtesy of my amazing casting director, who just kept calling me saying, what do you think of this guy? And I'm like, the guy who played Richard III on Stratford? Yeah, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> the actor that does makes my job super easy? Okay. Like, you, you can't really direct people like that, you know? You just make sure the camera's in focus and you go, what am I gonna teach you that you can already know? It'd be awesome. So uh, it was my producers and my casting directors mainly, uh, with the exception of Dominique, who uh, I take full credit for, and uh, she just kind of crushed. So, but we'll see. Um, when he was hit, when um, Aaron was dreaming and he was seeing all these other suicides and things, was that uh, people who had been sacrificed in previous years? Because he said they had to have five or six years. Yeah. So the idea was. And we kept it uh, purposely ambivalent. Um, my hope was that I was half a step in front of the audience all the time, like I'm, I'm hoping he hasn't seen anything coming, and I'm hoping that you know we show something and then explain it three scenes later rather than tell you what you're gonna see and then show it to you. Um, so yeah, the suicides, which was, um, interestingly enough, we, uh, we shot those in uh, Los Angeles when I got back home. Um, because we cut the movie together and it just we just didn't have sort of enough of the visceral because really, you know, when you have 18 days to shoot a movie that big, it's, you have to move. So uh, I pitched an idea saying, well, let's get a bunch of people to kill themselves. And oddly enough, I don't know if you guys are like super micro budget horror fans, but all those people who kill themselves are micro budget horror filmmaker friends. So <laughs> Jessica Cameron. Heather Dorf, uh, uh, Tracy Morris, who wrote the movie Creature, uh, Gavin Booth, the guy who stabbed himself in the face. These are all uh, other <coughs> horror actors. But yeah, I veered off your question. Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> oh, yes, hi. Uh, did anything weird or creepy happen? I did. Yeah, no, no joke. <coughs> um, so the house that um, when the camera goes up and pushes in where John Buckout beats his wife, so the exterior of that house was a place um, in a farm outside of Sudbury, and my producer John and I were doing location scouting for the, the Buckout house. Um, and when we went in, it was a dilapidated, uh, like the stairs were broken, and you can see all the way into the basement, and there was this horrible smell when you walked in. And if you peeled away some of the, um, some of the wallpaper, there was like kind of fucked up writing on the, that's a big beard, sorry, messed up writing on the, on the side. And I walked in and I felt this just horrible pit in my stomach. And I, I said to John, I go, God damn, like this is, I'm, I'm feeling just, I don't feel good. This is not good. There's something going on here. And he's like, yeah, I, I kind of feel it too. And so, you know, He's like, it's good, right? We should film here. <laughs> I said, yeah, I feel terrible. Let's put some cameras everywhere. <laughs> There's nothing, this is awesome. But uh, we found out afterwards, no word of a lie. I felt terrible. And I said to John, I'm like, what was the deal with this house? He's like, I don't know. It's, it's a house. Um, and there's a reason that it stayed there dilapidated. It's because the father who lived in that house went crazy in the early 90s, and, all right, kids, close your ears, um, killed his kids in the basement, oh but not before doing horrible things to them first, then killed his wife and committed suicide. And the woman who owned that house was his, uh, was his sister, and they can't sell it because you have to disclose all these things. We didn't know this going in. We thought, wow, this is a shitty house. I'm wondering what happened, you know. <laughs> Great. We walk in, I'm feeling sick to my stomach, and then I find out afterwards. Like, after we filmed, I found out. 
Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, I just, I just yeah. was like, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So yes, how horrible! Just yeah. you could feel just the sadness. And that shot that you had when you came up, mm. that was amazing. Thank you. That shot. It was an accident. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a steady cam operator. He was great. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, where is that? Yeah. Is this in Canada? Yeah, everything's in Canada. Unfortunately, yeah, so. I'm sorry, New York. I blew it. I'm going to shoot my next one in Buffalo. I'll grab that and that knocks. I'm going to go to the museum and just shoot the shit out of that. This is so embarrassing. Uh, yes. Anyone else? Hands? Anybody else? Going, going, going. Uh, I, want, I did want to say um, Matthew was kind enough to bring some mini posters oh, that are out by our desk. Limited. Number um, totally limited. He said he's willing to sign them. If you happen to have a sharpie, he doesn't. I don't. But they're I'm so bad at this promotion thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's some posters. Would you like some, please? So uh, excellent job. Thanks, so man. Glad.